Welcome back to another Linux Game Cast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, the zombie smash is dead, shows up at the Tokyo Game Show. Well, at least the shell did. More on that in a minute. And game developer, yes, he swapped out the native port of his particular product with a Proton uh, hmm, contraption. But don't worry, he immediately swapped it back. Valve knuckles up and gets a slap on the wrist. And GameHub discovers the secret of Proton by just installing normal Steam games. Valve thinks you suck at moderation, so much so they've offered to do it themselves. And our PCS3 now lets you play supersonic acrobatic rocket-powered battle cars. Those were the dark ages. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> welcome to Linux Gamecast Weekly. I'm Vince Stone, that is one Jordan Swang, and you heard him, you know him, you love him, staying up late like he does every Saturday night, two nights in a row, one Pedro Mateus on the island Hello. of Britannia. <laughs> and together with you, at home... That's right. Join us live, helping us form the most important bit, Cocaine Ultron. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Uh, I didn't write anything down, so I'll keep it as a surprise. What's up, Jordan? I bought that fucking laptop, finally! Oh. It went on sale, and now we play the game of mashing F5 on the tracking screen until <laughs> it arrives in two weeks. <laughs> what, 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 what about you, Pedro? Yeah, uh, I, I too was mashing F5 today because uh, I had ordered a new case to put the desktop in, something quieter, and Amazon was like, yeah, no, you have Prime, so you can get one day free shipping, so it was supposed to arrive today. No, 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 apparently something went wrong, and now I gotta wait until the 26th. Ah, uh, yes, deciphering Amazon shipping. It's always fun, speaking of that. Uh, <laughs> I picked up the FCA 1616 because Amazon's like, listen, you're gonna buy this thing one way or the other, and it's like, I know, I know. <laughs> Long story, I, I, I skip ahead one minute if you want to get through this, but I, I found it because like part of like getting up in the morning is checking like Guitar Center's used gear section for new arrivals. And I did all the research to find another interface, a multi-channel interface. And I was like, all right, fine. Did the research, found it pretty cheap. It's like, let's go to Amazon, take that off the wish list. I went to Amazon. It's like, oh, there's a used one for 160 bucks. It's like, Gee, yeah. All right, <laughs> fine. You got me, Amazon. You got more of my money. So uh, let's give some money to the horse. Man, the ho the horse has gotten enough cash. It's flush with it, especially e e even after those fines. It's a steam. Linux update of, of the, the week. week. All right. There it is. Ha ha. <laughs> ah! Hey, man, I, I got buttons and stuff that I'm pressing. Steam client beta update right into it, September 19th. Uh, a couple things rolling out with this. You get an updated version of Chromium. You can, uh, Jordan, this is kind of neat. You can play local co-op by streaming to multiple devices simultaneously with the Steam link with a five gigahertz. Yeah, and I believe this applies to the Steam Link app as well, yep. which is really interesting because one constant complaint we have is that a lot of games uh, come with couch co-op and no network multiplayer, but through the magical fuckery of Steam input and streaming, it may be possible in the not too distant future to actually like hook different Steam accounts into like some Steam input thing and then have network play for couch only games, which would be kind of neat. And it would be especially fucky for shit like screen cheat. Um, but like e even without that, it's pr it's pretty neat if you have like uh, if you have a party going on or something, everyone brings their tablet or whatever. Um, you can do multiplayer games and everyone gets a screen, so you don't have to worry about everyone crowding up on a couch or something. Yeah, a yeah, uh, couple other things they fixed the install scripts for Steam Play games that not you know, they weren't properly running after using Big Picture Mode. I didn't run into that because I don't use Big Picture Mode, and uh, they now Pedro. Allow language selection before a game install. Uh, that's got to uh, be, as somebody yeah, who likes to play all of his games in Portuguese for some reason. No, no, I don't. Yeah, you do all the time. Uh, in fact, man. I hate it <laughs> because most of the games that do support Portuguese support the wrong kind of Portuguese. You mean, you mean the real kind of Portuguese? The superior <laughs> the Portuguese? The wrong kind, yes. 2.0? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's just, for me, it's just an extra window that shows up whenever I'm trying to start a game. It's like, no, just English just go uh i might just change the client language to english again just get rid of it but uh no they uh also have the they let you now use your android phone or tablet with the steam link app as a touch controller if for some reason you have an irrational hatred of i don't know buttons and uh what i was kind of hoping to see was uh maybe a fix for all of those zero byte uh, proton downloads that the client does whenever you start it 
Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. That would be nice. And I think, I don't know what happened, but um, go back and check it out Thursday. Jordan and I actually made progression after a year. Thanks to you a lot for helping us uh, put together this like fucky studio. We can now capture Portal 2 again because it's busted for other reasons. And I downgraded from the Steam Beta to the regular client and it hosed my entire installation. It was fun. Yeah, that was that was a bit spooky too, because it's just like going from unstable to stable, and then Steam dash dash reset wouldn't work. Right, it's fun times. It's completely wipe it. Fortunately, I have halfway decent bandwidth for America, and uh, we were able to get back up and running. So, uh, Valve got. Le- yeah, listen, listen. It's fine. This is fine. Okay, everything's right. fine. Fine. <laughs> no, um, so. Everyone knows the um, the two hours or two weeks rule for Steam refunds. You either return it after two weeks or um, until you have played up to two hours of the game. Now, according to France, that's against the law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, according according to France, you get two weeks. Period. Um, to if uh, to discover if a game is defective, does not live up to your expectations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and um, you're able to return it. So, um, because Valve is an awful, awful company that breaks the law, they get fined a little short of 200,000 euro, which is about the revenue from, I'm going to call it maybe 60 seconds of Steam operating. 60? Like, no. <laughs> like uh, I, I, Listen, listen I'm, I'm, be, I'm being generous. I'm factoring in exchange rates. Maybe, maybe there's like a bottleneck where Gabe has to like personally rub the cash on his nipples before it's allowed. <laughs> oh, okay. Clear right. accounting. <laughs> but... <laughs> But that's the thing. Like, if you're if you're gonna go after companies for for violating consumer protections laws, and then you just find them a pittance of the money that they surely made in the process, it kind of doesn't incentivize this behavior, especially if it's two hundred two hundred k is cheap. That's a me. Like they can they can they can fire a me from their team. No, listen, man, this was just a test sue. It's like, <laughs> hmm, can, can we get away with it? Hmm, okay, do the drawing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ubi- Ubisoft actually got stopped with this too for Uplay, but yeah. since they don't put out Linux games, fuck oh, I was about to say, that's good for them because we don't like them, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> how it works. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, th- like seriously, 200,000 uh, euros for Valve or Ubisoft for that matter is, it's not even a slap on the wrist. It's someone sneezing from all the way across the room and th- them getting kind of, you know, slight feeling of difference in air pressure Mm -hmm. uh it's uh yeah the biggest fine here is that both stores had to display the little banner at the top for a while saying yeah no we done goofed and uh, we were fine because we breached these laws and yeah that was the real punishment there shame I, I, I mean, sh- shame in about two hundred thousand euros, which is which is which is actually probably less than two hundred thousand euros if you math that out. But there's developments in the VR space. We got to talk about uh, G- Gabe Newell and Knuckles and Knuckles and Knuckles. And it Knuckles looks like and sex tweet, kind of like a half sex swing. I don't know. It looks. I mean, maybe if you like squint your eyes and then like rub a bunch of salt in them, you don't know. part it. It, uh, it kind of looks like something you'd put on right before you fucked up somebody, man. Like if those. Were I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind <laughs> yeah. of the point. There, it, when, when, when when we're getting into like bare knuckle PC gaming fist fights, Valve's going to be at the forefront <laughs> of it. Now, this is this is the Knuckles EV3. We talked about the Knuckles EV2 a long, long time ago. These are the new controllers uh, that Valve will be pushing out with Steam VR eventually. Uh, they have stuff like the skeletal input system so they can track where your fingers are and you can do all sorts of complicated movements. Um, and they've uh, they've made some material improvements to the the knuckles units uh, based on uh, feedback. Uh, they're gonna basically it's better build quality and about two hours of extra battery life on top of it. Um, they also have a uh, unity plugin and a demo using that unity plugin that you can dissect and it's a fun it's like a functional example of all the skeletal input stuff and uh, Knuckles features that they want developers to start playing with and integrate with it. Um, yeah, so uh, they're going to be mass producing it. And if you want, if you want some of these, don't, don't call, don't call Val. They'll, they'll call you. Well, that's <laughs> definitely a thing. I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, if you have finger tracking, how long until we just get a game where we stand around and wish peace among worlds, and that's it? I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to Diddle Simulator personally. Diddle's- <laughs> 
No, I, I'm thinking, you know, f yeah. f finger tracking. So, uh, Valve, you're going to help me find my fingers? Is that it? No, but you can <laughs> pretend to be a human and have them. <laughs> listen, if, if, if you, guys, you got to be Patreons. You got to listen to the pre pre super shows and where I'm informing Pedro that you can do like full limb transplants these days. And Pedro's just like, you know what? I'd rather have a stump. Wait, wait, can, can we get like a self install kit though? I mean,. <laughs> Can 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 your new hand run Linux? That's the real question. We're asking the hard hitting questions here. Indeed. Does it th does it work with the Valve skeletal input system? Does hey. your new hand have SDL two support? No, 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 no. This entire thread of conversation is uh, uh, too spicy. Uh, we need moderators to step in and tone it down just a bit. Mm hmm. And uh, apparently, Valve want to do it themselves because, uh, well, according to them, uh, even though some members of the uh, you know the community and uh, some game developers would rather do it themselves, Valve has decided that uh, there were enough people asking for their help. It's like, no, this is way too much. We can't deal with it on our own. And you guys are pretty big, and you own the freaking store, so help. And Valve has decided that yes. They will help. Uh, you will also, uh, if you're a Steamworks developer, you will also be given the option to opt out. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, if you just um, if you just leave it as is, whenever a player reports one of the threads or something that happened in your um, in your discussions, uh, Valve will go in, have a look, and uh, someone will actually review it. And my question here is. Did they come up with a really good algorithm, or did they just hire a bunch of people? Because there's think, a lot think, of crap. I think both, right? Like, because because <laughs> that's that's how you like train AI, right? Is you have the humans do it, and then you have the machines do it, and then you have the humans check the machines work to make sure that uh, it's valid, right? So mm -hmm. event, event, eventually, the Valve AI, uh, we're, we're let's just call her Glados for the for the sake <laughs> of making things simple. <laughs> Because because that's that's clearly what's happening. They've trapped poor. We Ellen better not get like a message basement. tomorrow from Steam. It's like, how did you know that? It's like you shut, the, <laughs> you shut your damn dirty <laughs> mouths, you fucking asshole. Yeah, no, they got like, they got poor Ellen McLean trapped. They're using her brain as like the basis for. Anyways, but I I mean I mean yeah, this, this, these are these are tools um, that I guess Valve is making available to community moderators because apparently there's too many people shit posting on Steam. Hmm? I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I don't see a whole lot of the shit posting. I just see a lot of like, well, just like random bullshit posting, just talking smack. You, you see the arguments. To, or, where are they going to draw the line with that? Uh, <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, we have a couple of new games this week. Uh, well, uh, we do. Before we get to the new games, we do have some game updates and ballistic overkill. Uh, white person shooting the game uh and what they've no, they're, they're, done they're, 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 there's Pedro, one black guy the one fucking Hispanic guy screen, one you racist. yeah there, there's the one black guy <laughs> they literally yeah. have the token black guy <laughs> come there, on there, 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 there's a ninja but we don't know what his ethnicity is because we judge people solely on that does he run yeah. linux that's all i care about Yes, it runs on Linux, and, uh, you know, barring a few Unity hiccups every now and then, it actually runs pretty decently. Uh, what they've been doing uh, lately is they, they're they introducing a new uh, mode of play, which they call Rounds, and uh, they found that during the early beta, people were being a bit too passive, because apparently it was more rewarding to just wait it out and then just launch a big attack at the end. And in order to try and combat that, they have now um, made it so that the earlier you get a kill in rounds, the uh, the more points you get. And uh, it, those points will, of course, progressively decrease as the uh, Are the you trying to convince on. me that there's enough people playing this to be angry about something? Oh, yeah. Are you, are, are you trying this to tell me This game is actually... Pretty popular. I mean, it's not, you know, CSGO level popular, but it's got consistent 5,000 players on average. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of the, it, 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 to be fair too, it is one of the, it is one of the few uh, Unity titles out there with Vulcan support. That's uh, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, you can definitely tell that they've changed something because recent reviews mixed, which you're def <laughs> you're going to get is currently 599. That's half off its regular 1199 price. Yep. Uh, I didn't necessarily hate the game. I thought it was an R.H. shooter, but it definitely follow fell into the it's an alright shooter. We, we got yeah. lots and lots yeah. of alright shooters. Um, but I'll say this: uh, if you do the update, 
it's not going to launch. You just need to restart Steam because reasons. That's apparently a thing. It's a known issue with this update. And to tap on the Vulcan support, that works beautifully right up until you get into the map. Then it just goes into a, like a white screen of like, okay, game's still running. Just can't display anything. Then again, that could also be the beta Vulcan drivers I'm running from NVIDIA because they, they got issues. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so proton. up next, there's some Protons. <laughs> proton Preference, you know about it, Butcher. It's a game that came out in 2016, October 5th, right off the top of my head as I read it from the Steam page. Um, <laughs> currently 9.99. it's, to quote, a fast-paced 2D shooter. Blood-soaked, da-da-da, Butcher. If it's a side-scroller, you will blow shit up. It's not bad-looking at all, but uh, something happened uh, with this game earlier this week. And that something is uh, the developers said, hey, man, we've moved to a new version of Unity. The Linux thing, it, it doesn't work anymore. And uh, we, we don't want to fix that. So <laughs> what we're going to do is go over to Proton and you'll be able to play it uh, via Wine. I mean, Proton, same thing. Well, that lasted for hmm, two, maybe three days. And they said, yeah, uh, guess what? We're back to native builds. Yeah, 13 hours ago, 13 hours one of the ago. developers was like, yeah, uh, we've referred it back to the native builds because apparently something was uh, throwing a hissy fit with the game and uh, Proton. Mm. <laughs> mm. And and I mean, like, here, and here, here's the thing, right? And we're, we're going to see this especially with um, Unity games where it's, it's a bit of an ordeal to transition between major uh, and sometimes even minor versions of Unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of games that are available for Linux that were originally written for Unity 4 or some late version of that. Unity 5's out. Was, when's Unity 6 due? Tuesday. Anyone know? <laughs> Sometime. <laughs> I, I, guarantee, well, I guarantee when that drops. No, very few people are going to actually um, update their Linux ports over to, um, over, over to the latest version of Unity. Mm -hmm. So... The, the, this is another place where sort of Proton comes in. I was thinking about this too. I, I mentioned it last week. I don't remember if it was like during the show or in one of the mid segments, but Wayland support. Um, eventually, if we want to, if we actually want to get rid of Xorg, um, you're, you're going to need games that are going to be able to support uh, Wayland. And that's not going to happen for a lot of Unity titles. Proton might be the only way to play them in the future once once we get off the X's. <laughs> this is, uh, I remember the original announcement, the developers said, hey man, that's gone. And the way it was phrased was, uh, we're just going to do this in Proton. We've already sent a message to Steam to tell them to mm -hmm. whitelist it. I think what they might have learned was Valve's like, it don't work like that. <laughs> you need to do all this testing. Then we'll do it. And they're like, oh, we got to do work. Uh, look, uh, our native build's back. Um, that's the thing. <laughs> So mm -hmm. the busted build is back. Proton doesn't work. Yeah, these developers need to, uh, you know, fix their shit. Sometimes the path of, path of least resistance isn't the best one, but damn it, that's not going to stop some people from trying anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, new games. In the gardens. Indeed. Gardens Between. Uh, it is a puzzle point and click uh, adventure game. Um, it's available now. You can pick it up for about 21 Canadian or I guess twenty two seventy nine Canadian, which is some I, I'm imagining twenty bucks US in that realm. Um, the art style, um, wow, tennis. That was that was <laughs> not a correct fail. Reminds me a bit of uh, Samorost, actually, with like all the all the random junk being thrown around. Um, but yeah, you got you got you got to solve puzzles. There's a, there's a touching story involving two best friends. A touching friends. story. Wait, does this have an adult filter on it? No, I mean it the is Catholic called Church. the Gardens Between. The, the, the gardens Church between, between a touching story. story. Yeah. <laughs> Hot. Um, yeah. Um, it doesn't require a distro or RAM though, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's another one of these like time fucky puzzle games where you can go backwards and forwards in time, and it affects how the levels work and how like the various elements of the puzzles interact with the level itself. So we we, we we've seen a few of these. It looks all right. It's a little pricey for. Um, for um a puzzle game though at uh, 20 bucks yeah wow. and uh big kudos to the dev i shot them an email when the the game released and they came back and gave us the three keys so we may be throwing chairs at it at some point um he did say it's like oh yeah we've been getting some feedback from people and they say that uh 
the game is two to four hours long, and that's a bit too short for the 25 Canadian or the well, 20 listen, bucks. There's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> don't make your game short enough to where somebody can watch it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> That that might yeah. be a thing. Uh, Crosscode. What's it about? Crosscode. Um, it's a action JRPG. Um, it, uh, it has a free demo, so I downloaded it and tried it out for about fifteen minutes. Um, what immediately struck me as odd was um, the combat uses shoulder buttons, which is a bit of a Dark Soulsy move. They uh, combat in Dark Souls and Soulsborne games tend to use the shoulder buttons as opposed to your more traditional action games that'll use um, A B X Y or the cross circle square triangle thing on your controller to actually determine actions. Um, it's fun enough as it is, but it's, um, it's, it's very much by weebs for weebs. There's, there's a lot of stuff where it's like, no, th- th- this, this appeals to like a very, very specific aesthetic taste. And that is fake Japan. White, white, white yeah. people, Japan. That that is that is the aesthetic here. You look at the uh, characters, but, and that's exactly what they look like. I mean, the, but like I said, uh, the controls are tight. The gameplay is fun enough, um, and it is uh, reasonably priced ish. Sort of. Also, another twenty bucks. It's on sale now for fifteen percent mm-hmm. off. Um, I mean, it and it has actually fairly decent. Um, it has decent reception as 2000 well. Two thousand something mostly positive, positive, and all of those people are going to email Jordan at LinuxGameCast dot com with your hate. I know they they <laughs> fucking hate me. Bring it on! I, I you know twenty seven hundred reviews games. since uh, September twenty first. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good, dude. Listen, they know their market. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah by, by weebs for weebs. <laughs> all yeah. right, show title. Uh, <laughs> last but not least. Artifacts Monday. You know them as uh, that company that makes all of the um, hidden object games, or at least the ones that are worth a damn on Steam. Uh, and they've decided to slightly break away from their standard fare of games, and they're just doing a um, point-and-click adventure game. Uh, I'm sure it will have plenty of uh, hidden objects there, but it's called My Brother Rabbit. And uh, I also sent... Uh, Actually, they sent us keys uh, over the Steam Curator Connect. Two keys, in fact. It's like, how do you... Listen, what? you know, yeah, part of me like really wants to faceplant, but the other part's like, yeah, at least you tried, little buddy. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I shot an email to their uh, their PR guy because he left his email in the Steam Curator uh, note that when he sent the keys, it's like, uh, yeah, we kind of need three. He hasn't replied yet, but mm. they've made with the keys previously, so I'm sure they will. Well, do I mean, they, they like straight up emailed us like, would you just like access to all of our games? Like, we don't do it like that. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I, yeah. I mean, like this, cl- this is this is very clearly a children's game. Like, this is something you give your toddler or something. I don't know if we can get a hold of some PCP. I mean, um, <laughs> listen, any, any, LSD, anything can uh, be put on. Okay, uh, anything can be put on hard mode with PCP. Then that's just knitting. that's just a given. <laughs> All right, let's get let's get out of here, man. All right, coming up next, after we uh, beg for money so that we can fund our rampaging PCP habits, <laughs> we're going to tell you that the Smock Zero is totally a real thing, you guys. Oh, my God, I'm holding one right now. It's just off screen. You can't see it, but it's real. Well, um, we don't have driver news this week, even though NVIDIA did release a driver uh, today but uh don't worry it'll be here next week this week though we do have some very nice people to thank yes we do jordan you want to tell us about it (laughs) absolutely not what do you think i am someone who goes here week after week to tell people to head on over to linuxgamecast.com i don't know (laughs) i keep forgetting to add me in this shot (laughs) Well, I, where where will we put you though? Because like you're gonna you're gonna block out the sexy banana, or you're gonna block out the the title. Hey, I, I was gonna like put my little head where the nipples are. Just just double nipple, <laughs> just double nipple then head. That's show title. Goddamn right. <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, but yeah, head double on over to Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, fund <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen. Fund this. Um. <laughs> yeah, give 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 us money. Click on click on the links. 
<laughs> uh, we got we got new egg affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links, humble partner links. You can donate money to charity and also give us cash, or you can just buy stuff for yourself and then we get a little bit of a taste. We got uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, PayPal, all that good stuff. You can also head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. We're donating through that mechanism, gets you some cool shit like early show note access, access to the Discord channel that you see in the, the corner sometimes where people are shit posting. There's just so much shit posting, and Valve won't take down your shit posts. It's great. <laughs> Only I will. Um, you, uh, you also get access to uncut VODs three days early. You can RSVP for game streams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We had some people. Oh yeah, we we did it. We did a thing, uh, preacher. We sort of ran over. We the do a bunch earth. of shit outside of this. We do a bunch. Of, we did a complete yeah. recap of Preacher Series Three. If you want to watch that nightmare fuel, Pedro, what did you rock? You rocked some proton business uh, Tuesday, yes, right? It was uh, the the lost. Um, source game that never got any form of Linux love, which was developed by Ubisoft, of all people. <laughs> Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. There it is. Wait, um, are, 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 are you telling me that I was wrong when I said Ubisoft doesn't make Linux games? Oh, wait. <laughs> no, that's uh, definitely a thing, but uh, Thursday we reprised a, not a dead series because it was Patreon Goal and we went through it. Uh, we're continuing on with the Portal 2 now that we have the tech to capture it. Um yes. That's kind of painful to watch, but if you want to watch it, I, I always like to say Portal 2 is me, like for comedic effect, pretending to be angry at Jordan at the beginning, but by the end, genuinely being pissed off at the man. Um, we, we immediately uh, it, 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 devolve it, 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 it into just... It goes both way, buddy. It it's kind of brilliant. 117 beautiful patrons backing this. Hey, we're at $260 a week per Saturday Night Train Work, which means we, if we, we can just hold it, can we hold it or maybe get a couple extra patrons? Uh, all through next week and close the month yeah. out merch run oh, yeah. oh my god <laughs> and we, we, we got a couple of people to thank for pushing us over the edge freedom penguin matt hartley's project increased their fr- pledge and uh, got a new one what the hell's a they're french yes they, they went to the french and they, they and and they they put some they put some cold cuts and cheese and whatever in our in our in our, in our refrigerator i don't know and uh, we got to thank uh colsta as well our newest patreon Thanks mm-hmm. a bunch. We, Costa, we literally couldn't like, do. Yeah, like definitely came we in. We got your yeah. message. Yeah, it was, but he's like, yo, yeah. check this out. Definitely. I wanted to push this over the edge so we can get this mm-hmm. merch out. And uh, that's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining to have our, our stupid uh, horse and buggy show. <laughs> like on uh, our, our, our horse and pony show. Pony horses. <laughs> hey, man, let's do the news. Yes. So this again. <laughs> Yeah, this again. <laughs> Smash Z, uh, news and upcoming milestones. This year's Tokyo Game Show was full of surprises. First, I did not expect to see the Smash Z there. At least three of their reps were there from technical side, marketing, whatever. Um, so they were there, and the downside is is they did have a Smash Z, but it no worky, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not making this up. Uh, they had issues with the connection between the PCB and screen. They needed another chip in between, apparently, and they had to wait another two weeks before they could get a new PCB to fix the issue so they could not have a working prototype in time. This is coming from Boiling Steam. Uh, yeah, the Smash said they literally brought a non-functioning shell mm-hmm. to show off. But does it feel good in the hands? That's that's the important thing. I don't know, man. I, I was doing a little extra research on this business just because raisins. And a couple of people posted, like, from July, a video that they had, uh, the team behind Smash said it posted, like, hey, look at it working. You look at the fucking cables of it. It's clearly either an HDMI display port running out of it, along with mm-hmm. a power cable and a USB port. And it's like, man, that that's just, uh, that's a screen using the controllers via USB to control the game. Yep. And uh, yeah, no, the um, they say that now that they have the specs finalized, or so they claim for the umpteenth fucking time, uh, they will have a Ryzen, what is it? It's a custom embedded Ryzen uh, APU. It will oh, have an a, 1100 something or other. Yeah, uh, it's the um, v, 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 Ryzen V1005B with the Radeon Vega 8. So it's uh, basically like the uh, Ryzen 3 uh, equivalent for the desktop APU. And... Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be expensive, obviously, because uh, 900 euros for the mid-range version, 700 for the cheapest, and 1,100 euros for the most expensive one. 
And that's they like, say that's that like three it, grand Canadian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they say that it will be compatible with Steam, GOG, Origin, Itch.io, Battle.net, and Uplay. Mm-hmm. Something tells me that the Linux variant, because they will have both a Windows and Linux variants of this. Oh, no, uh, you, you're burying the lead, man. What version of Linux is it going to run? Oh, no, no. no oh, this, 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 this is my favorite OS. part. All right, fine. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Hang on. I, I just want to get this out. I, they, each of these. Lovely clowns wrote like two lines and they're trying to battle it out to see who gets more coverage on this. So um, go, go, hey, go hey, for hey, it. Hey, I'm just going to hey, sit back. Go for it. Go for it. All right. So if you actually go to the article uh, then mentioned from July, they say that they're going to be using a custom Linux distribution. Get this based on Arch. So we're dealing with smart OS. <laughs> and that just that just tickles me in a very, very deep place that I didn't know was ticklish. Until uh, until this team went and stub, st- shoved their fingers in my craw and tickled it. Um, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, no. But, my thing was that the the Linux version of this is probably not going to run Origin, UPlay, or PS4 uh, now. Look at you call the it. bright side, though. This thing's been in development hell for so long. AMD's actually got a part kind of capable of pulling off the claims yeah. that they said five yeah, years yeah. ago. <laughs> I, you know, you, you know here, here's what I think that is. I think AMD is looking at making a Switch competitor because NVIDIA has that skew locked down. And this is just their proof of concept. They're going to say, let's give the boards to these guys. Let's let them fail. And then we're mm-hmm. going to learn from their failures and go to Sony and say, hey, you want to make a new PSP or whatever? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How did the Vita go again? Oh, yeah, it died. <laughs> hey, did you see the PlayStation Mini? Oh, I saw that. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Everything's getting a hundred bucks for twenty PlayStation games. There will be a line, man. I mean, are they are, are they good PlayStation games? Do I do you get like full Metal Gear Solid or shit? Or I don't like remember Final the Fantasy list or stuff like that. There were a couple of known ones there, but I don't remember specifics. <laughs> All right, well, uh, DXVK. Anyways. Yeah. Yes. So, new version of the XVK. Uh, well, not a new version per se. It's actually uh, Jason Extran's uh, explanation. It's a very high-level explanation. He is one of the um, Intel Mesa developers. And basically, he's been saying what he and the rest of his team have been doing to get uh, the XVK to work well on the Intel drivers. And of course... This is going back to Mesa, so chances are anyone with a um, GPU that's capable of Vulkan will actually be able to reap the benefits. Uh, the Yeah, they fixed uh, Skyrim Special Edition, which was uh, the performance was really, really bad. And they managed to get it from like single digits on the FURPS counter to playable. So that's kind of awesome on Intel graphics. That's pretty good. Uh, and of course, Batman Arkham City. Which Not- they found a bunch of bugs, and all they had to do was actually streamline some of their code to account for the, uh, well, for the fuckery that is the DX11 renderer in that game. No, we got, we got to remember this is Arkham Arkham City and not Arkham Knight. Arkham City was the yeah. second game. Arkham Knight's like the fourth or some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Um, th- but th- this this is this is good. This is important because we 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 know Vulcan enables more uh, more thorough GPU utilization, especially mm-hmm. in um, in uh, applications that are sort of threadbare when it comes to CPU. So we're at we in terms of like integrated graphics, you may actually see like better performance using the XVK just because yeah. you know it's actually utilizing mm-hmm. the GPU hardware more effectively and threading that and using the shared memory model that uh, the Intel CPUs have. And considering that uh, the cheap Intel laptop is the mainstay of like the poor college kids. I see you, Mr. Fox dog. <laughs> <laughs> Last I think week. Foxy has been drinking. He has. I, I see what you, I see what you're doing. I'm on to you. It's, uh, anyways, uh, cons- cons- considering that the cheap Intel laptop is the mainstay of poor college kids, that it's it's an important step of making gaming, especially on Linux, accessible because it doesn't matter. Like even if you have shit to your hardware, you can still play games at playable fr- frame rates. Yeah, so. indeed. Uh, that train keeps rolling. Good times. Uh, what do we got up next? Proton, but Proton not in the up. Steam segment. That's odd. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We talked about we talked about this um, last week. Game Hub. It is a game manager for um, I, don't, I don't know for people who are too intellectually deficient to run Lutris. Um, so now they're saying, well, we in release not eleven, we have uh, Proton compatibility now, 
which basically means, hey, we can just in, click a click a tick box in the Steam client and then <laughs> install games via Steam CMD because that's the thing that's very difficult to do these days. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a thing though. Like if you if you want to play your Proton games and you want to use Game Hub because you don't want to keep a million clients open, that is now available to uh, at your disposal. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. You think uh, yeah. Ben, you think Strider's going to try and steal some of this? What do you mean? You mean Borgtris? <laughs> Le resistance is futile. Man, no, nothing survives Lutris, man. Lutris is the Borg. Uh, it, it'll get absorbed, man, 100%. But And as you guys mentioned last week, the UI already looks similar, so might as well. I don't know. I need to try it and see if it uh, differentiates between Lutris by, I don't know, being usable. <laughs> oh no! Like w- w- watch it, just like straight up, you you download, you compile the source code, and just w get the Lutris and runs it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Just strip uh, out the branding, replace it. Like, yeah, we yeah. Go. that's my new project. Um, it's good to see other projects playing with Proton because Proton does some things that Nintendo don't. For now, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, moving on, uh, OMGOG. Yeah. Or 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 McGurg. Or McGurg. <laughs> the uh from the GOG team, you know, somebody's like, hey man, uh w- what about this GOG client that you guys have been dangling around, dicking us around with for years? <laughs> um well, you know, somebody wrote like CD Project writers mismanaging resources and making more and more Witcher spinoffs instead of bringing more stuff to GOG. That really needs some your dreams are fine, but whatever. So uh Link90 from GOG writes, he's like, hey man. This is simply not the case. As for an official word on the topic, we're not actively working on it. We're talking about the uh, Linux client and Galaxy. Yeah. Galaxy. It's like, yeah, we, we got other things going on, man. We got other things going on to <laughs> like, what the actual hell? I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. So we, we got to take care of this other stuff that we're not talking about and mm-hmm. just Galaxy client. Fuck you guys. Which is all right. Just don't promise it. I'm tired of it being dangled around. But we do need to understand, Pedro. We do need to understand, Jordan. This is poor widow Gog estimated annual revenue of $98 million. They don't have the resources to do that and support Linux at the same time. We're asking, we're going to be mean, hurt their fifis, and it's never going to come out. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's 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 what. The, listen, we're not the only ones with crippling PCP addictions. <laughs> Clearly, there's some problem over there, and maybe they need to seek help, or maybe they just need more PCP. Who knows? Yep, here we go. I got the actual the JavaScript thing. <laughs> Expressing frustration with the lack of a Linux client is understandable, but let's no mix. All right. <laughs> Speculation and assumptions together to present them as facts. We will update users if anything changes on the Linux client front. Hope this clears things up. No, it fucking didn't. Good job. Well, yeah. so so <laughs> like there, there's there's also the whole like Betteridge's law of headlines here, mm-hmm. where it's like if 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 the headline is the question, the answer is no. Will will we ever see get the Galaxy client on Linux? No, just just no. use Lutris. No, we have something better. It's called Lutris. Yeah. Yeah. There's Lutris, and there's the fact that, in theory, there's like 20,000 games on Steam which will just run with Proton, which are basically the exact same thing that uh, GOG has been doing with their wine ports, quote-unquote. Hey, man. Uh, I don't know how Steam does it, being a small little company. I mean... Yeah, no, so very tiny. Um, But uh, that also reminds me, as... Anyone done a comparison between Proton and the shit show that is the quote unquote Linux version of The Witcher 2? So someone would need to actually build that from source because if you're you can't do it through Steam at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you you need to build Proton from source and run it from there. Which is more work than I want to do, but I'm kinda curious to see the result. That could be a thing. <laughs> uh jam. Dun dun dun. Yeah. I, I I hate I hate it when we're jammed or I hate jam especially strawberries. Now this is an open game jam um, on itch.io. You have until October eighth, which is about three weeks from now, to make and submit your game. Um, the only real restriction here is that it has to be entirely open source. Uh, you can use whatever tools you want, although they do prefer that you use open source tools. But there's no hard restriction on there. What do you get in exchange for winning? The satisfaction Drugs. that you contributed to an open source game jam, uh-huh. you don't you don't get PCP. Um, but I mean, it's it's always it's always cool to watch what's coming out of game jams, especially for things encouraging uh, people to use open source tools and actually open source their products at the at the end of it. 
Um, we, we, we basically have this to plug every year. Uh, you, if you have a, some game that you've been farting around with, give it a submission. Who knows? Make sure that runs on Linux. Fun, man. Uh, how, how loosey goosey are they with like the open source thing? Are talking like source available or does it have to be like hundred percent? No, no, no. Open source. They even give you the link to all the licenses on the, uh, what is it? The opensource.org website uh-huh. so all of those licenses that get classified as open source you can use all right uh, so somebody go do it with the uh, unity and really set somebody off <laughs> well I, I mean you can you can have open source unity shit you just can't like ship yeah you just have to stuff. open source the assets i guess right all right <laughs> or just use creative commons assets that's or be thing. like or be like leadworks and import unity assets there who knows go. that's a brilliant thing <laughs> uh psychopaths our new favorite psychopaths along with the uh developers of like open morrowind have uh definitely been these lot oh yeah the rpcs3 this team has been prolific and they've made leaps and bounds and there were a couple of games that they were having issues with like physics not working properly graphics not look rendering at this, properly man. look at this 1005 playable i remember when that was like 60 mm-hmm. that was like last and week like games that do nothing oh six that's mm-hmm. it six <laughs> Uh, I, so, I, actually, actually five, five at the moment as of August. Oh yeah, five at the moment. Yeah, uh, the uh, the new release comes with a new SPU LLVM compiler, which uh, actually fixes a lot of the physics, the graphics, and audio on a bunch of different games, including that one up there, Red Dead Redemption. Um, they also have improved um, mouse binding. If you wanted to play some of the shooty games on the um, on the PS3, but the idea of playing them with a controller makes you cringe, well, now you can uh, set the mouse emulation to, you know, help you play those shooty games. Uh, it's uh, one thing, I was as I was reading down the article, I see the name of this game, and it's I look at the screenshots like, wait a second, that's Rocket League. No, 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 it's supersonic acrobatic rocket-powered battle cars. Which was a prototype to Rocket League, basically. <laughs> that works now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they added a couple new games to the working list. Uh, they talk about Armia 2, one of the first Yakuza games, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Supersonic, Idiotic, Don't Respect It, Disrespected, whatever. <laughs> Top that. Finally, finally, though, we can we can preserve and play that gaming masterpiece known as 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand. <laughs> <laughs> or you too can get rich or die trying. Um, Sengoku Basara has a game, has uh, some updates as well as does Monster Jam, some JRPG stuff, and Tomb Raider. As always, this is just crazy to watch. As like the mm-hmm. PlayStation Three is a fairly complicated piece of hardware, and handling all that shit in software is just completely astounding. Um, being able to do well, it at well, 1080p and almost tapping 30. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, what, the, what they were saying too in this article as well is um, thanks to um, the work of, of uh, Valve and Molten VK, now they can actually start looking at supporting Mac OS because now they don't yep. have to maintain a separate metal path. They can just do all their development on Vulkan and Molten VK will take care of that stuff as well. So that's very cool. Spreading the PlayStation 3 love all over your lower back and neck. <laughs> and face and uh, chest. <laughs> Indeed. So to wrap us up for the news, we have a bit of an alpha. I saw this one come up on Twitter. It's like Valheim Alpha. Now you can download it. Uh, it's a pay what you want tech demo, basically. Uh, they say that uh, even if you do donate some money right now for the currently available version, you will not get the full game. So keep that in mind. Uh, the Linux version comes in a tar.gz. That's very nice to see. Uh, but yeah, they, they say the game proper will come out uh, later this year. And I think Jordan actually hit the nail on the head with the, that particular description. <laughs> Yeah, the it's basically it reminds me a lot of like Planet Explorers, but mm-hmm. in the Viking realms on the Yggdrasil yep. world tree. Um, I mean, it's got online multiplayer, so it at least has that going for it. That, That's what I was going to ask if it was open world or something like that. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, online multiplayer saves a lot of games from like ah, well, 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 I can play this with people. All right, cool. Let's 
let's give it a shot. Um, yeah, so it's it's another one of these Viking themed games. Open world, do your crafty thing, build lodges, build rafts, build swords, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Apparently, uh, they haven't yet implemented female player models. More crafting and bosses and music. So if you want a silent trip with just you and your dong, Valheim <laughs> is your game of choice. <laughs> That's when you hit your dog on the mass of the uh, little raft thing that they show in one of the screenshots. That's your only background it's, noise. Listen, listen, Pedro, it's not a Rust clone yet. <laughs> yet. Mm, Probably runs was... better than Rust, but that wouldn't be saying much. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, we're reluctantly crouched at the starting line, engines pumping and thumping in time. The green light flashes, and soon distance faces the Cherquisition. Oh my god, it's all on fire! This is the Chairquisition. This is where we take a game, we talk about it, we review it, we run it through the quality assurance ringer that maybe the uh, developers didn't do before releasing the 1.0, then we give you a score. It's usually based on one to four chairs, based on, at, at least for the first part, it's based on categories. Does it launch, performance, uh, graphics, and control? And then we also give you a score from one to four chairs on whether we thought it was fun or not. Uh, this week, we're throwing chairs at distance. Uh, 1.0, after six years of development, it's finally out. It's by Refract Games, built on Unity. You can pick it up for about 20 pounds or whatever whatever that actual that that is an actual money what is it distance is an atmospheric racing platformer fusing futuristic arcade racing with parkour survive a deadly and mysterious neon drenched city by jumping or rotating and flying so ven on ubuntu how did that work out 1804 ryzen 1700 uh 16 gigajoules ram nvme old crusty ancient 980 uh didn't have any issues i mean it launched out of the box nothing broke then again we've been playing this game for six years so it had better pass that test as far as the performance at 1080 it's usually hovering around 120 kind of impressively being a unity title it still manages a solid 50 at uhd that's 2160 3840 graphics things have changed up a little bit i mean it's still got some neon stuff but mostly everything's nice and dark it's even got a little slider at the beginning it kind of tells you hey man hide this logo so you can run into shit but more on that at 11 Control, not enough to ding it, but something to mention. It works fine out of the box with the Steam controller. Nothing to complain about, except your button prompts are all f up, man. They used mm. to work, and now they don't. But, uh, yeah, man, QA score, solid four chairs out of that. Jordan, baby, how's it over in Fedora Land? Well, Fedora Land uh, it really, really likes my Samsung monitor for some reason, but uh, it does launch on Fedora 2864 bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, performance on which is pretty great uh, with everything up to 11. I got about 200 FPS on ten, at uh, 1080p and holds about 100 in-game at UHD, so that's pretty good. Graphics-wise, yeah, it's dark. It's there it's it's a little unclear at times when uh where where things are um that Ven, Ven has some theories on that he'll explain that a bit later um control wise so i had a bit of a problem i first tried it out with the uh the dual shock controller here and all the button prompts were all fucked up so i said okay maybe there's a steam controller profile a steam input profile for this tried it fucked up so <laughs> moved on to the next guy Look at, look at the steam controller here. Look at it. Look, look at the nipples. Um, yeah, out of the box again. Little, little fucky. Try to find a profile for it. Also fucky. Finally, we settled on the the tried, true, and classic wired Xbox 360 controller. That all worked out of the box. But let me tell you something, Brad. Because y'all have been in development for like five, six years or whatever, plus the development of Nitronic Rush. And I gotta say, mm -hmm. I gotta say. Get some fucking button, correct button prompts for your goddamn controllers. Do you know what button five on an Xbox controller is? I do, because I had to fucking look it up. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, 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 it's the right bumper, by, or sorry, it's the left bumper, by the way, if, in case you were wondering. Yeah, um, this is a significant oversight, and I'm going to ding in a chair for that, because it's a racing game. Every other racing game I played, I plug in my DualShock, and it works as expected, this is the rare exception. So I'll give it three chairs. Pedro, I'm at Solus. Yeah. Over here, uh, I actually tried both Solus and Fedora, Fedora being on the Steam box, because I decided, you know, it's the 1.0 release. Let's see if it works on the Steam box. It freezes after 30 seconds, but considering all the issues that the Steam box currently has, I'm not going to get a chair for that. The 2400G is still a bit uh, iffy on the Linuxes, so 
over here on the desktop running Solus 3.99999 uh, with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080. Uh, I had no issues running the game. The performance at 1080, uh, it usually hovered between 150 to 130, but uh, there were tracks where the FERPs would dip to like the 60s. At 3840 by 2160, those same tracks would dip to the 30s so yeah that was uh it still needs a bit of work there uh graphics i noticed something because i played all the way through the uh single player campaign because that was the big promise and i saw on some of the levels that had like vegetation there was zed fighting uh, and I hadn't seen Zed fighting textures since Victor Vran released the Motorhead DLC. Though, judging by the way that they disappear when they clash with each other, it's more likely that it's Zed fighting tessellation rather than texture meshes themselves. Um, and uh, uh, MT also ran into this yesterday. At 3840 by 2160, there are some seizure-tastic flickers on some tracks, and on others, you don't even get to see anything because it just doesn't render anything uh so controls orange. controls yeah no i i am a mouse and keyboard player i um you can rebind everything you can rebind everything on controllers but yeah you will have to deal with the cryptic button prompts so yeah the, uh, three chairs for me <laughs> well empty got wrecked but this game <laughs> got an okay score how about fun, Ven? Did you enjoy playing Distance? Hey, man, let's talk about this, some subjective business. Uh, I kind of hate being right. Really, I don't. Uh, the story mode. This is what we've been waiting on. Uh, all this, I'm not going to say the main thing, but this is the thing that's been brought up commonly. But where's this game at? It's like, we're working on the story mode. Got to get the story mode. Got to make it a masterpiece. The story mode, at least for me, it's basically a five-minute tutorial stretched out to 30-plus minutes with some random VO in the background. And just for fun, shits and giggles, it'll randomly lock your ability to fly, jump, and all these other things that are critical to playing the game. All right, so we know story mode, for me personally, kind of a massive waste of time and energy, but there is an arcade mode. Actually, there's a couple of different modes. The arcade mode is something I was originally interested in, but it's basically turned into a collection of workshop tracks with a few refract classics, something that looks nice, and it's nice neon. They're smattered in there. And I guess maybe if you wanted to, if you wanted to be very kind, you, you could kind of frame it as like they loved uh, the workshop level so much built by the community that they put it into the final product to showcase their skills. Or you could really call it what it is. It's kind of lazy. I mean, I, I bought a game. I, I could already play the workshop items. I wanted some new stuff from the developers. The game didn't get that. Uh, Empty actually brought up a really good point on last night's stream. You know, most, if not all of the included workshop tracks were designed by people who have played distance for years and they wanted something more challenging. And when you just kind of walk into it, even though I've been playing the game for roughly six years, these levels are fuck you hard and yep. they're not fun when you start off, even at the beginning in the arcade mode, you're like, what the fuck's this? Come on. We just want to have a good time and play around, do some flips. Uh, uh, not going to happen. So, uh, for the new players, those levels really do come off as something akin to like impossible levels from Mario Maker. But at the end of the day, what you get for your $24.99, currently on sale for $19.99, which was the regular early access price, is a single player arcade racer where your only opponent is the track. I mean, it's forever alone mode. There's no AI, no collisions, just ghosts that you can race against. Even if you're playing online multiplayer like we were last night, you're just racing against the other's ghosts. That's kind of its biggest sin because that can get boring really quick. And for me, I kind of feel like distance went from like that promising neon Tron game of like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Look at it. Just look at it. And it runs so well. It's a unity title, which it still performs fantastic, but it's kind of turned into an apocalyptic noopscape filled with cheap shots and shit lighting. Yes, that shit lighting is used to hide the cheap shots on the tracks. Get yourself some of that hashtag sun. Now, listen, I'm not angry about this. Um, this actually came out on Linux, you know, a few months after they released, uh, when their Kickstarter completed, they got out, they got the Windows version, then they got the Linux version. They've been good at keeping it up to date and parody. They delivered. This is the first Kickstarter backed thing, which I paid $70. So did Pedro and, uh, empty who's racing with us. If you're watching the video version paid $70 too. I mean, we got money invested in this. So again, I'm not angry at this. <laughs> I, I'm massively fucking disappointed, but 
I'm not going to say don't get it. If you like what I said, just know what you're walking into. You're basically getting a bunch of workshop items with a couple of tracks. Now, they added some bonus if you finish the campag, and unfortunately, you got to unlock it. You can get some of the Nitronic Rush business. But I'll give this mm-hmm. two chairs. That's the middle of the road. It's not bad, but I, I don't feel that it's necessarily finished. Yeah, most racing games, I don't really grok. And honestly, distance isn't an exception. And I'm not that good at kart core. I've, I tried to practice using the arcade mode, using the, the story mode, which story mode was extra fucky because at one point I got to the point where it's like, this is how you boost. By the way, we're not going to let you unboost. So your car is going to explode now. Okay. Um, that was one of the things that only got fixed by switching to the Xbox controller. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just not good at a lot of what the game demands of me. And I mean, that's fine. I don't have to be good at every game. Not every game has to appeal to my delicate sensibilities. Um, but I mean, this, this is my fun section. Uh, it looks, it looks all right. Despite being incredibly dark. Uh, the story mode gives you, I guess, some reason to go from point A to point B. There's like some colony and you got to race out of there. I don't know if you're if you bought a racing game, something tells me that you're already in the mood to, you know, race from point A to point B and you don't need the additional motivation or like the trippy hellscape or whatever the hell is happening. At some point, I was expecting like a demon to show up and I had to become doom guy or like some sort of like Autobot doom guy with like a built in BFG cock. Actually, if that was part of the game, I would be super jazzed about it. Um, yeah. Uh, I tried out the track Mogrifier, too, because they were they were hyping that up for a while. I threw in the entirety of the uh, lyrics to Sir mix I Like Big Butts and got rewarded with possibly the easiest track I think I've ever played. Uh, so that's, that's the thing. Honestly, for six years of development and fine-tuning, I'm not horribly impressed with what we got. It's a competently done racing game. Um, and like the car core element stuff is interesting from like an academic standpoint, but it doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm going to give it one share. It's not paid racing games. This isn't going to change your mind. At least I don't think so. But what the fuck do I know? One share. 58 minutes. 58 minutes on top of the 50 hours that I already played of this game. Uh, that's how long it took me to destroy that single player campaign that they'd been promising for the last year. Uh, I even got the speed race runner uh, announcement uh, achievement to prove it. So, yeah. Having the, uh, you know, having played through the old Nitronic Rush levels in a remastered type of way, it was, uh, it, that was a really nice touch. I really enjoyed that. What wasn't a nice touch, as Ven already alluded to, were the workshop levels. And if you're watching this right here, uh, a lot of people weren't having fun. Not th- these tracks specifically. These were the easy ones. It's, uh, the, um... The ones later on in the stream, if you go back and check uh, Friday's stream, it's, uh, yeah, no, there's, um, people just weren't having fun with those games, uh, with those levels. So it's, yeah, you could have picked so many better workshop levels, but uh, the official levels aren't all that better yet, uh, aren't all that better either, because... Well, uh, there's Zet fighting in some of them. Uh, I, I hadn't seen that since Unity 3, so not sure. I'm not sure if I'd call the long, long wait of six years for this game to come out of uh, quote unquote early access. Uh, but I did actually sort of enjoy the single player campaign. Uh, They definitely hammer on the point that yes, this is an atmospheric racing game and that is what we're going to do. And that is what uh, we're going to beat you over the head with. And I didn't actually hate it. I just don't like the workshop levels because they were a very, very poor choice. It's yeah, it gets three chairs because I still like it. It's still distance, but it's, it could be so much better. Here's a, here's a question for you guys. Did any of you run into this issue? I, I forgot to mention it in the, in the technical section. Yeah. Twice. But the game, the game runs fine, but when you get to, when you're at the very beginning or the very, very end of the level, it gets super chuggy. Did anyone run into that? Nope. Uh, yes. Right at the start, uh, the frame rates drop by like half. 
Didn't yeah, experience and, it. And, uh, and yeah, and then like right at the end, just as just as you're about to hit the 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 finish line, it just goes like super super chuggy. The game says their Steam overlay says it's like 200 frames a second or whatever, but it's clearly not. Anyways, that's uh, that's our take on distance. You got any final thoughts before we head on over to hate mail? Uh, I. Again, at the uh, end of the day, take that shot, kids. Um, I feel like they just put a bow on it, and th- this bow's all fucked up looking, and it didn't really stick on very well. <laughs> yeah, no, and yeah, they could have totally, absolutely picked some great workshop levels because they exist, uh, but instead it feels like they picked some of the meh, they're playable ones. So, yeah, no. Mm. I think I think this is quite honestly our first chair acquisition that requires a seizure warning. <laughs> Anyways, coming up next, pretty colors, but not these pretty colors, a different pretty color. Let's put the proverbial bow tie on this, shall we? How's that, Ben? How's that? <laughs> no, see, see you, ru- you ruined it. You have to do the entire segment. What the high pitched no voice? <laughs> Yeah, no, that was killing my throat just attempting to do that. Now listen, uh, um, <laughs> no, no, listen. I normally don't do anything in post-production, <laughs> but you just wrote that check. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So uh, if you'd like to let us know about how uh, my voice sounds after Ven's done fucking with it, uh, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little choosy box, and, uh, well... You train that Google AI because they like to ask you to do that a lot. Um, yeah, it's uh, if you're a game developer by any chance and you'd like to send us some keys, please don't do what Artifacts Monday did. By all means, do use the Curator Connect. Just send us give three our, keys. Give them credit. Please. At least they didn't just send one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. They if you've seen two, us, I guess. Here's the thing. <laughs> on our developer thing on the Steams, if we get this. I mean, this is a constant thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't redeem that. It just expires yeah. in 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your time or hours. <laughs> All right. So this week uh, we have, uh, well, we have Nemo uh, actually so asking if, we're fucking with them. So the new theme is just fucking with us, right? Uh, did you choose the colors for your show notes because they're all the default colors of uh, hyperlinks indicating their various states? Uh, no, the show yes. note colors have been this basically since I joined and there needed to be some differentiation. Jordan? <laughs> I mean, you would think that. But here, no, here, 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 here's the thing. Um... Yeah, the, the 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 color scheme is not great on the news posts, but to the colorblind people in the audience, I say, send your hate mail to Pedro at LinuxCamCast.com. <laughs> Hang on, I, I gotta go look at the uh, show notes now. Give, give me a second. Keep, keep going. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I, also, I mean, um, default I mean, hyperlinks uh, in bright neon pink. Really? <laughs> well, here's all of our... Uh, I'm looking at the links. I mean, I can see the read the words and see the links, right? I don't, I don't know. Here's the thing. Here's the one thing I will say, Doc. I got to throw this out here. Uh, can you use Discord? Because if you can use Discord, you can use our fucking show notes, my friend. Uh, because <laughs> this is the same damn color scheme. Um, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> the moral of the story is that Animo has had his eyes like physically removed and replaced with jello shots. No, maybe he's just like next level hard mode on the internet. He, he surfs it with his eyes closed. He can feel it. Oh, it's like, yeah. oh. well, actually, 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 shit. Does our does our uh, does our website actually support media tags for like screen readers and the, the braille things? Oh fuck no. <laughs> well, way to way to shit on blind people. Then way to shit on blind people. <laughs> Up next, we got uh, something from David. He says. You guys, Star and Pedro Star, really think Proton has the momentum to put Linux porters out of business? Overact much? <laughs> Feral, not going anywhere. <laughs> Acting <laughs> talent. <laughs> talent, yes. Uh, what do you think, Pedro? Uh, I don't know why you singled me out on that one, but no, I don't think it will put Linux porters out of business. It might put 
someone like Feral, or it might put someone like uh, Virtual Programming out of business, but I don't think people like I, I, Ethan... I think Go that's ahead. more what he's talking about, though, because Ethan, like, Ethan doesn't really produce ports anymore. He basically says, if you've used XNA to build your game... You, 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 if you use my thing, then you get all the other support out of the box. And Icky Butts kind of just does, Icky Butts is independently funded through Patreon now. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, so he, what game from 1999 do you want put in next? <laughs> yeah, so, so I- 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 Icky Butts gonna do what Icky Butts gonna do. Um, yeah, I, I really do think that uh, Feral, Feral, and Virtual Programming, and well, I don't want to say Aspar because I haven't really put out a Linux thing in a number of year now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Civ Six was the last thing. Anywho, yeah, um, yeah, I think it's ultimately uh, it's ultimately going to be their death knell, and it's really and the the, the real concern though is it's going to be the death of like native Linux games because if it's e- if it's easier to produce your build and it's Proton compatible, uh, then why would you why would you invest time and effort and quality assurance in doing something that Valve is going to do for you? I'll say this. Now, when it comes to Feral, Feral's already ahead of the ball on this. Notice what Feral has been putting a lot of time and energy into. That's mobile games. Mm-hmm. You know, that is like, why are you guys trying to shove like dirt racing and shit on mm-hmm. a, like F1? Why is that? It's like, ah, right. Hedge those bets, right? Let's make sure they're running on Android and iPhone. I think Feral's going to be all right. Maybe not a whole lot of... um. Maybe Linux ports. I think short term, definitely we're going to be seeing this issue with Proton because, yeah, that's a lot easier than, you know, getting your entire kit over. But then again, we have the engines like Unreal Engine 4 and Unity. They're not going to start getting worse getting the ports out, you know, making it easier for developers to target Linux. I don't think that's going to be a problem, especially in the long run. I think short term. But then again, this all hedges on fucking Valve, which I hate to say could get bored of this project next Tuesday and we never hear from it again. Yeah. And even though it is open source, they can just go, yeah, no, we're not going to update whatever version is in the uh, steam depot. So if you are trying to use it through steam, you're stuck at whatever version they have. And and I maintain that this is valve simply hedging their bets, right? They're saying, well, we, we, we try, we tried getting developers to come over to Linux. That's not going to work. What we're going to do now is we're going to produce our alternative Win32 API based on work that's already been done through Wine and DXVK and DX, D3D VK or whatever the uh, DirectX 12 to Vulkan thing is called. Um, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to take it on ourselves to essentially, we're, we're, they're going to be the Cyrix to, to Microsoft's Intel, right? It's going to be 98% compatible, and that's going to be good enough for the people who are already on SteamOS or on Linux in terms of like, playability like you can actually play the games and they well, run the, i definitely reason. think that's one of the things like in the perfect moon future it's not going to fucking matter as long as it runs at 100 percent. and yeah maybe mm-hmm. you're going to have this quasi weird hybrid mesh it's just like proton all the things or whatever i don't know mm-hmm. crazier things have happened yeah it, honestly it's, it's, it's steam os as react os that that's that's my yeah. that's my where my money is Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was going to say. If they can get SteamOS to the point where the difference in performance is negligible that most people won't even notice, yeah, no, they they did it. And yeah, at that point, at that point, anyone who's actually doing any type of Linux ports, that's when they, yeah, no, I need to find another line of work. (laughs) Well, I don't think it's going to get better than that. So, you know on that bombshell. Let's cue the music. You know where to find us, 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. It is kind of brilliant. We want to thank everyone for showing up live, helping us with the distortion in Shot Realm Dynamic. I'm Vince Stone. Find me on the Twitters at Vince Stone plus Vince Stone on the Google Plus. Or if you're a beautiful party patron, come hang out in our Discord. I'm always there. You can out reply me and I'll look at it. And I, I might post a little icon of a bear in snow that is clearly cocaine. <laughs> I'm Jordan Smung. You can find me on our website, messing around with color schemes to make things even more unreadable for Nemo. You can find me at The Burning Fool on Twitter, or plus Jordan Smung on Google+. Plus. And you can find me usually just uh, randomly stalking people out on the street. No, I don't actually do that. Don't di- don't get any ideas. I'm Pedro Mateusz. the Ripper. <laughs> you can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter, or uh, plus Pedro Mateusz on Google+. Plus. 
he wanders the streets of Whitechapel <laughs> trying to get to arguments with well, random people and then stabs them. I, I think we've solved all <laughs> Linux gaming problems in one hour. It's brilliant. So, it legit. nothing more to do than just roll them credits. <laughs> <laughs> At least you were honest. Hey, man. I was, I, I, I was, I was half expecting the, am I going to need pants quote from that fucking Google chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, credits don't need pants. Dude, Mr. Fox Dog, <laughs> Andrew S., Empty the Atomic Ass, Mike G., Barbara, and Betty make it up our executive producers, followed by a gang of like producers. <laughs> Dr. Dementor? Dr. Dementor, man. OG. And just O. <laughs> Let me see your O face. Oh! And <laughs> hey yeah, Linux Noob's sick. been a patron long enough to where he's probably like a Linux pro now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's leveled up. The real Pedro Mateus. Mateus. <laughs> look, look, at, look at those fuck buddies. It's fuckers. Yeah. Man. Find up saying cannibals. Oh, Mike G is still winning. <laughs> Mike G is one man. There's like room. If I'm if I'm generous, I can squeeze like two things on there. I've like racked my brain to put stuff on the wish list. I was like, I think we're good. No, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Mike G's like, yeah, I brought I bought you guys a house. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> with a fiber uplink. So yeah, get on that. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm trying to think of the difficulty curve where Tanzania. Sudan. Anyway, bad if I ever would. We love you. Bye. Next week, we'll be back. Five dudes. <laughs>